Live from the heartland of America, I'm Steve Gerber. Ready to deliver an inclusive and diverse discussion on the most important topics of the day, giving you better analysis and insight than anyone else. Shining a spotlight on the cockroaches inside the swamp and delivering truth and justice when you need it the very most. Here to help. Here are the three great things you need to know. Start your day today and the week. Number one, the push to put insects on your menu is picking up speed, but honestly, I don't care. I can hunt and fish my way past the stupidity until that's illegal, which should take at least two more years. Number two, a former Marine who choked out a dangerous criminal on the New York City subway has been charged with manslaughter, as you've probably heard. He's also raked in $1.9 million for his defense while New Yorkers defend everything he did. And number three, just seems the world is turning faster every day, doesn't it? Every day the world's turning faster. I mean, who doesn't feel like George Jetson on the treadmill with Astro running faster and faster and faster? Jane, stop this crazy thing. Would you please? But as I look around and I listen and I watch what is happening here and around the world, it becomes more clear every day that none of this appears to be an accident. None of it. All of these terrible policies look like they've been years in the making. And that's because they have. Each time you hear about some crazy idea and you think, well, nobody would ever buy into that. You should be thinking differently. You should be thinking something altogether different. And that is, how long have they been working on this one? Is it too late to stop it? That's what you should be considering. Eating bugs? <laughs> yeah, nobody would go for that, except that it's being pushed by the elites around the world to save the planet. Of course, they're not going to be eating bugs. You are, or your kids are. The same goes for bulldozing American and European power plants. I mean, we would never do that in exchange for random power based on when the wind might blow or the sun might shine without clouds, except that it's exactly what's being done. Only in the Western world. How long ago right now, think about this, how long ago does the year 2000 seem to you from where we sit? In some ways it was yesterday, Y2K and all that, you remember that of course. It just seems 100,000 years ago, doesn't it? I know I'm asking a lot of questions of you today, but you have to understand that the United States is being subjected to the United Nations Agenda 2030. And Agenda 2030 is very real very dangerous, not only to us in America, but to the entire free world. And remember, only about 30% of the world is actually considered free. The vast majority of the nations on the planet, the people on the planet, ones that do not allow for freedom to flourish, they don't care about the freedom of speech or the freedom of religion because they cannot and will not be bothered by such unimportant and trivial things. These governments rule with authority and many with an iron fist. They operate with near total control of the populations. That's the job they perform. And that's why our southern border is being overrun as we speak and our nation threatened with extinction. But I will get back to that in just a second. But first, let's take a look back at when this really took off. Not that long ago, really. Not that long ago, really. You see, most political promises are made and then forgotten as soon as a politician wins election. It's not always true. Here's part of one big promise that appears to have been kept. Listen. I'm happy to look them in the eye and say what needs to be said. I'm happy to tell them what I think. I'm not going to avoid them. I'm not going to be hide behind a bunch of rhetoric. I don't want a continuation of Bush Cheney. I don't want Bush Cheney light. I want a fundamental change. A fundamental change. Oh yeah, Barack Obama promised to change America forever, a promise he kept. If you missed it, let's be crystal clear about this one. Listen to this. We are five days away from fundamentally transforming the United States of America. We are five days away from fundamentally changing the United States of America. That was just before the election in 2008. That's right, the junior senator, junior senator from Illinois, was the one elected in 2008, at least that's what we're told. And it really doesn't matter anyway because he was in office for eight years. And he promised us things would be different with him in charge. Boy, were they. Barack Obama delivered on those promises over and over again. Today, the results of those dangerous policies are setting in fully. And the question remains now, can we ever stop it? Today, we know that 
ever since Joe Biden stumbled into the White House to keep the Obama transformation going starting two and a half years ago. For example, six and a half million illegals have streamed into this country. No Democrat will admit that, but the numbers don't lie. And over the weekend, more than 10,000 a day coming in, an all-time record. And those are the ones we can confirm. The transformation of America is in full swing in 2023. DHS Secretary Aliano Mayorkas is one of the most dangerous people ever put into a position of power in America. He's supposed to protect our borders. He calls white supremacy the biggest threat to America, while he leaves the border wide open. The MS-13 gangs and drug cartels pushing fentanyl on our streets and human trafficking of little girls. He allows it all to go on and lies about it. Listen to this. The president yesterday uh, at his commencement address uh, for the Howard University graduates called white supremacy uh, uh, the, the major domestic terror threat in this country. Is that correct? Uh, it tragically is. You know, um, in the terrorism context, domestic violent extremism is uh, our greatest threat uh, right now. Individuals are driven to violence because of ideologies of hate. Uh, anti-government sentiments, false narratives, personal grievances, and the like. And regrettably, we have seen a rise in white supremacy. That is all absolute garbage. There is nothing to back that up. The Southern Poverty Law Center is not a credible source for anything. Unless you want to consider sexual harassment by Morris Dees, who kept feeling up the help until he got fired from the organization that he created. The Southern Poverty Law Center has been a discredited organization for 25 years. 25 years. But it really doesn't matter what question you ask. There is a pat manufactured answer that is totally disconnected from the truth and reality that comes out. And this is true across the administration. It is one bogus talking point after another. Right? So what about Kamala Harris being named the border czar? It's been two years now. Mayorkas explains, but it's nothing more than marbles in his mouth BS. Listen to this. More than two years ago, uh, that uh, the president put Vice President Kamala Harris in, uh, uh, in, in playing a critical role in terms of trying to stop the flow of migrants across the border. W where has Vice President Harris been on this? Are you in regular contact with her? When was the last time you spoke to her? Um, I, I, Pr uh, Vice President Biden, uh, Vice President Harris reached out to me uh, earlier this week. Uh, that uh, effort is a years-long effort. And Vice President Harris has led the investment of more than $3 billion in the Northern Triangle countries of Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador. So, I mean, it's years long, but it's already been going on. I mean, she, she was a, more than two years ago, she got this responsibility. A absolutely. You know, that effort began in the Obama-Biden administration. Yeah. All these efforts began in the Obama-Biden administrations. We'll have more on this in a moment, but make no mistake. We're, we're at a point where we need to make some tough decisions. We need to protect ourselves because the government's not doing it for us. So then what? Welcome to the week. It's the Steve Gruber Show. I'll be back.